Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm going to do another landscape in colored pencil and I'm going to use Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils on a paper primed with some clear gesso. Let's start. So this is my paper. It's about six times seven inches in size. It's a toned Fabriano drawing paper and it's been primed with a thin layer of clear gesso. I used Liquitex clear gesso. For those who don't know or who haven't watched any of my previous landscape drawing videos, um, clear gesso is like a primer that creates something uh, like a rough textured surface that feels like sanded paper. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to use Faber Castell Polychromos colored pencils on it, and the reference will be included in the description if you want to check it out. Although I will make some changes to it because I like to use it as a general idea and I will be simplifying uh, some things or changing certain shapes. So here I decided to draw a slightly darker sky than usual. I'm going to use uh, this middle phthalo blue for the most part. And it's going to be especially darker at the top and then it's going to be getting gradually lighter near the bottom or near the horizon, closer to those mountain peaks. <coughs> so I'm going to do most of the shading or most of the coloring with a middle phthalo blue and then at the bottom I added a bit of light phthalo blue and even a touch of light cool gray. After that I started blending with my finger. Now on this surface you can blend with your finger because this rough surface creates some residue and you can blend colored pencils more easily. Uh, but the texture can be pretty rough so you have to blend it thoroughly. Now your, blending, uh, now your finger is a great blending tool because it allows you to push that pigment into the grain of the paper. And another way, another method of blending if you want smoother transitions is simply to apply lighter pencils on top of the darker ones. So here at the bottom I used a little bit of light cool gray like I said but I also added a touch of white colored pencil just to add some indications of some light clouds smeared across the sky. Now I'm going to start drawing these mountains. We're going to have a mountain ridge here in the foreground and then some distant mountain peaks in the background. I'm going to use an interesting combination of colors here for the shadow side of all of these mountains and peaks I'm mostly going to use blues. I'm going to use a Prussian blue for some of the darker tones and then I'm going to soften that and blend on top of that with a middle phthalo blue which I also used for the sky. So I should get a nice uh, warm bluish color that will stand in contrast against the light side of the mountains. As for the blending, <coughs> I used a number of different blending methods including this totillion. But for the most part I will be relying on layering pencils to blend. So one of my main methods of blending here and one of my main methods of overcoming this rough texture, this grainy texture of the paper primed with clear gesso will be to apply lighter pencils on top of the darker ones and then maybe put some more darker pencils on top of that. So it's going to be a back and forth process as I try to control both the amount of texture as well as the amount of value. So the shadow sides of all of these objects, of all of these mountains and peaks uh, will naturally be darker and like I said for those I will be using more of this Prussian blue. And uh, let me just explain where the light source is and how that's going to influence these shapes. So the light source I think you can already tell is going to be on the left side. When I draw landscapes the light source or the light is usually coming from above but it's usually coming more from one side than the other so in this case it's coming more from the left that means that each and every one of those rocks, peaks, 
shapes will be darker on its right side that's going to be the shadow side and it's going to be lighter on the left side which is exposed to the light source so uh, this thing that I'm going to draw now this surface this rocky surface of these mountains is going to appear very complex but it's actually not that difficult to draw as long as you remember where your light source is so I'm going to be drawing sometimes slightly smaller marks sometimes slightly sl larger marks but I'm going to start to try to stay consistent with my light source keeping in mind that every uh, one of those surfaces which is facing the left side needs to be lighter and on that light side of the mountain we're going to have a little bit more variation in color as well as texture because that part of the mountain is more exposed to the light source and uh, naturally there's going to be more detail visible there and I'm going to use more of some greenish and yellowish tones in there actually um, the background color of the paper is already a little bit yellowish so I won't need to use any of those colors I can just make it a bit duller using some warm grays like light warm grays and make it a bit more greenish here and there using um, one of my darker grays and what I'm trying to do with this uh, darker gray, a uh, darker green sorry is I'm trying to make it look like it's a mountain in summer so it's going to be covered with some grass maybe some bushes and distant trees it doesn't really matter but I'm going to want some slightly greenish tones interrupted with those duller yellowish and grayish tones which are supposed to represent the bare part of the mountain where there is no foliage and no grass whereas others darker darker ones which are covered with the darker greenish um, details those are covered with some foliage with some grass and on the other hand these darker bluish parts are the shadow areas of those uh, rocky shapes which are facing away from the light source now a particularly nice effect that I was able to achieve was to add that metal halo blue to the middle part of the shadow side of those objects which uh, creates a nice shadow color and nice shadow shapes and then I can go back in and add some smaller details within those shadow shapes by reapplying that Prussian blue so my approach is, when I draw these shadow areas is always to use the um, the Prussian blue first which is a dark blue color and then use the middle halo blue on top of that to blend it and to make it smoother but also to make it lighter in places because the thing is that the shadow side is not going to be completely dark there's always going to be a little bit of reflected light coming from other surfaces and I'm gonna want to establish a contrast not just between the light side and the shadow side of those object, but, but objects but also I'm gonna want to establish as you can see a contrast in colors where I will have those greenish and slightly warmer colors on the light side of the mountain and bluish cooler colors on the shadow side so I think that'll make for a very nice contrast and it will allow the lighter sides of the mountain to stand out and it will allow the viewer to understand shapes uh, easier and uh, to understand them better so I'm going to be uh, repeating the same approach over and over again on all of these shadow areas but like I said I can always go back in with that uh, Prussian blue and add some more darker details within that shadow area if I want to add a little bit more variation in there as well uh, usually uh, when you draw these shadow areas it can be beneficial to simplify them in terms of detail so that the contrast between the light side and the shadow side would be even stronger uh, so another, th another good thing is to try to merge some of these shadow areas 
into larger shapes because that also enhances the contrast and enhances the shapes and allows the viewer to understand these shapes better but like I said generally uh, to achieve a more dramatic contrast a more dramatic uh, effect you want to simplify the shadow sh shapes a little bit but if you want you can always go back in and add a bit of variation in there as well just a few suggestions of some rocks and cracks in the which are visible in the shadow area as well um, another thing that I have to mention is that the lighting uh, will be changing slightly the lighting of my recordings will be changing slightly I'm sorry about that there's not much I can do about that because it's just the way the camera adapts to the uh, to the light but I'm hoping that I will keep those to a minimum so uh, now I'm shading this peak of the mountain and it's uh, again it's going to be a combination of some yellowish tones from the background color of the paper some grayish tones that I apply on top of that and some greenish tones uh, so hopefully it will create a nice uh, variation and some suggestions of how should I put it patches of grass foliage here and there interrupted by bare parts of the mountain rocky parts of the mountain and the green pencil the dark green pencil that I'm using I think is a chrome oxide green although I don't really write down the exact numbers or the exact names of the pencils because I think ultimately it doesn't really matter you can just if you're trying to replicate something like this you can just use an equivalent after all not everybody uses the Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils there are a couple of reasons why I prefer these pencils um, I'm not paid by them or anything I'm not trying to an advertise them but there are a couple of important reasons why I use them the first and the most important reason is because they are available to me locally and I can buy them individually so when I ran, r ran out of a particular color that I use more than others I can always replace it and buy some more the other reason is because these are oil based pencils which are a little bit harder than most colored pencils which means that they are going to hold the tip a bit better and which means that they are going to perform a bit better on a rough textured surface so I imagine that if I were using and when I work in colored pencils I like to work on sanded surfaces so I imagine if I were using softer pencils and many of the wax based especially higher quality artist quality wax based pencils tend to be much softer and creamier if I were using those on this rough surface the surface would eat through these pencils a little bit quicker so here uh, the pencils last a bit longer and I'm also able to achieve some finer details and draw smaller shapes, smaller marks, finer lines and things like that. So that's th those are maybe just a couple of reasons why I prefer using these but obviously it's not like uh, you have to use this particular brand either the brand of the pencils or the brand of the paper because uh, what I found about materials is that you can normally make it work with just about anything as long as you uh, adapt to your tools or your materials but every type of material every time you try a new new tool your new pencil or new materials you will go through a period of adaptation anyway as you can see this uh, mountain ridge is sort of uh, bending at one point and bending towards our viewpoint so that the, uh, so that there will be a mountain slope here in the foreground which is exposed to our view and also to the light source and then that part of the ridge that I'm working on now which is to the right will be almost all in the shadow because it's all facing away from the light source so I think 
this is a very nice shape and it will make for a nice composition because we have that uh, foreground part of the mountain or of that ridge and it's kind of leading towards that peak so we have like a natural leading line leading from the foreground onto the onto that midground element in the center of the scene which is the mountain peak where I will have a substantial amount of contrast but I will also have a lot of contrast here at the bottom where this part of the mountain slope in the foreground is all exposed to the light source whereas the this uh, ravine behind it is all in the shadow because that's where uh, the rocky ground kind of slopes abruptly. So to this foreground area I'm also adding some of that green and um, some other colors to add a bit of variation and to create some suggestions of uh, groups of bushes and maybe some clusters or clumps of grass with a few areas of bare rocky ground here and there and a few shadow areas here and there to indicate that there are some cracks and some raised parts of that terrain just to show to the viewer that this is a rocky rough terrain and that there is a little bit of variation there. I went on top of that with a grey pencil just to soften the texture a little bit because I felt that it was a little bit too much so the good thing about this clear gesso is that it's, uh, it gives you a lot of texture and that texture can be used to create illusion of detail but sometimes that can work against you because the texture can be a little bit too much so you can always try to blend that and there are different ways to blend it but the best thing about clear gesso is that you can control the amount of texture so that you can create illusion of detail when you want it and soften it and eliminate that texture or that detail uh, when you want to so for the shadow area I used uh, this Prussian blue for the most part but I even used some darker tones at the bottom like a black colored pencil because I want warmer and darker tones near the foreground so I want even more contrast and even um, even uh, warmer tones in the foreground because I'm trying to imitate the atmospheric effect where the stuff in the background becomes um, lighter, more bluish and um, there is less contrast so uh, this is another way for me to imitate uh, not just the atmospheric effect but to use that to my advantage so that I could imitate that feeling of depth that you have when you look at these uh, scenes in nature. I'm adding some of the middle phthalo blue to the shadow side of the mountain to make some parts of it lighter. Naturally I'm going to use a little bit more of that at the top and a little bit less at the bottom. For those darkest shadow areas in addition to the black colored pencil I also used a dark indigo pencil which is very dark it's even darker than the Prussian blue so I use that as a transition between those lighter blue colors and the and the black as a final touch I decided to modify this slope in the foreground I didn't really like the shape I thought that I could maybe make this shape a bit simpler so I removed this corner here and turned it into a shadow area of this darker part of the slope of the mountain and uh, then I also decided to modify this large round shape here as well I didn't really like I, I can't really explain it but I just wanted to make it a bit simpler a bit smoother and simplify it a little bit so that I don't know the shape of the ridge would be a little bit easier to understand for the viewer so some of these decisions are a little bit difficult to explain but sometimes you just don't like certain shapes and you want to modify them a little bit. Finally I put my signature in the lower right corner and now the drawing is finished. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to check out my other videos and for more content and longer videos 
you should check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching and bye for now.